You wake up when the alarm goes off. <laughs> You go to your job. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> My boss. What would be the most obvious trait that would distinguish strong men from the weak? Obviously, most of us would, would say, all right, strong physique, right? Being strong, physically strong. Yeah, fair enough, that's, that's also one of the things. But there's another one, being emotional. How well can you control your emotions? When I was 17, I could do pull-ups with 60 kilograms already. I was a strong ass motherfucker. I was the strongest guy at school. But there was one thing I didn't control, and that was my emotions. I was getting emotional like all the time. I, I remember having this this crush on this one girl, or oh shit, that's gonna be cringy, right? Not gonna go too deep into this shit, but like, I remember having a crush on this one girl, and she kind of like rejected me, and I remember like crying, and I took another guy as her boyfriend, and I was like so fing. I remember crying about it, and like chatting with two of my friends in the group chat on Messenger, on Facebook, and, I, and at any time I was getting into some argument with someone, you know, some heated debate or like discussion or something, I would get easy, very easily offended and emotional. As I grew up, as I discovered the philosophy of Stoicism, this, no matter how strong physically you are, if you cannot control your emotions, you are basically a bitch. Men and women want to respect you, they want to see you as valuable. Using the video game language, you, you will not be seen as the main character of the group, no matter how jacked you are. And I was pretty much one of the most jacked guys at school. Emotional men are useless. All right, you're gonna have, let's say, a chick, all right, a woman. Big titties, you know, you feel me? She's gonna be sad, she's gonna have something going on in her life that will make her sad. Fair enough. She's gonna go on TikTok, she's gonna go on Instagram. What she's gonna do, she's gonna cry about it, she's gonna complain about it. What's gonna happen? An army of simps will flood her comments and DMs asking, how are you, my queen? Are you okay? Oh my God, I'm feeling, I'm feeling so sorry for you. A guy does it, all right, the same shit. He's going through some struggle in his life. Happens to all of us, fair enough. He goes on TikTok, he goes on Instagram, does the same shit. An army of hot chicks will storm his DMs and comments, trying to like, you know, make him feel better. Oh my God, do you want to go on a date with me? Oh my God, I'm feeling so sorry for you. No. no, he'll be lucky to get some likes. Nobody will care, bro. Nobody cares about man's problems. Men have to solve their shit. The best thing you will get is some sympathy, but everyone will be kind of subconscious like, man, this guy is b get your shit together, whatever. And I remember watching those like red pill videos a while back, and I remember guys crying about female privilege, that women can go on social media and cry about their problems and they're gonna get sympathy, while well, men will not. Well, yeah, well, that's the way it is, bro. Gender equality is, is a social construct, it doesn't really exist. Get over it. You all red pillars playing those tough guys out there, but you're crying about female privilege. Yeah, it's real, bro, unfortunately. So what is the thing that we men have to focus on if, you want, if we want to be masculine, if we want to be strong? Stoicism, bro, controlling your emotions. Stoicism isn't about suppressing your emotions and becoming a robot, which is what, you know, feminists say, oh, toxic masculinity, stoicism, shut the up. Because you cannot get rid of your emotions. If you suppress them, it's gonna be very unhealthy, it's gonna accumulate, it's gonna explode one day, right? So instead you control them, right? Something happens, you analyze yourself, all right, why am I feeling this way? Is this event really as bad as I see it? Because oftentimes our emotions basically make the events look worse than they actually are. Now, an emotional man, cannot make right decisions. His emotions will kind of like put this fog over his reason and whatever decisions he'll make, he'll make in a moment. Because emotions are very temporary. In a few hours, you can have like several different moods and feelings. So they are not good when it comes to making decisions which will impact sometimes your entire life, right? 10 seconds of anger impacting your entire life, that would suck, bro. And that's not a trustworthy man. Your brothers, your tribe will not trust you if 
The decisions you make are influenced by little impulses that happen and then they are gone. So what I want you to try is anytime you are faced with a situation which causes some kind of emotional distress, you take a step back, you detach yourself, all right? Make it a habit to analyze yourself. It's gonna sound cringe, you know, like to think to yourself, oh my God, all right, am I feeling this? Why am I feeling this? So, so on, you know, it's gonna sound kind of difficult. Perhaps, maybe for like especially extroverted people, it will be more difficult. I, as an introvert who's already in the habit of overanalyzing everything that I do in the social situations, it was quite easy for me, <laughs> right? Usually overanalyzing social situations is pretty f***ed up for your mental health. But in this case, when it comes to emotions, it's pretty f***ing productive. And then at the end of the day, right, you pick up a journal, you pick up the pencil, bro. You know, if something particular happened and you felt some emotional distress and you reacted this way or that way, you're gonna try to analyze, all right, why did I do it? Was it a good decision? Did I do it under the intoxication of emotions and stuff or so on and so on. Stoicism became kind of a habit for me. You know, I've been studying it for the last year. It's not that much of a complicated philosophy, but it's super beneficial. Right, so most of the time when we think of philosophy, we think of guys like Friedrich Nietzsche, Plato, Aristotle, Socrates, all those like very difficult books. Stoicism isn't that difficult. Of course, if you're gonna read the, like the source books, you know, like Meditations of Marcus Aurelius, and the books of Epictetus and Seneca, you know, it's gonna kind of be difficult at first because they have like this very eloquent speech and so on and so on. What I want you to do is first study books written by modern day authors, which are way more easier to read for an average reader. Books like How to Think Like a Roman Emperor and the Daily Stoic, the first sto books about Stoicism that I read. Now, How to Think Like a Roman Emperor is interesting in a way because it's basically a bi biography of Marcus Aurelius, but it teaches you the Stoic philosophy through the examples from Marcus's life. So it's not just, oh yeah, do this, do that, uh, three tips, uh, how to be stoic, some shit like that. It actually shows you the life of Marcus and how he implemented stoic philosophy into his life, into his actions. Pretty inspiring, it's a great book. Now the other one is The Daily Stoic, where you basically have the quotes from Epictetus or Marcus or Seneca, and you have it explained by Ryan Holiday, by the author of the book, which is much easier than actually reading meditations and reading all of those very complicated quotes and not understanding any of it, right? And as always, bro, remember, keep your balls full and your stomach empty.